All right, so today we're going to be working on this black and white paint horse. A little bit more painterly. And we're going to start out with an oval, and that oval is going to define the main head area and the jawline. And we're going to do a small circle for the mouth, and do two lines connecting to create the muzzle. A horizontal line marking the eye level, and then we're going to hit up a little six for the nostril. A diagonal line down the center will mark our major line of action and the nose. Now, we're going to do two teardrops for the ears. I know that sounds all very simple and I went over it very fast, but honestly, I do the same thing every time, so I don't know how you want me to make that more complicated. Now, our color palette for this horse is a lot of neutral grays. As much as it's a black horse, we're going to do a lot of neutral blue, purple, and brown. We are not using a lot of actual black. It's a subtle color palette, but it does the job. Now black horses can be hard to paint because they are a walking contradiction. Black is the darkest color of all, but you have to minimize how many dark values you use in order to paint a black horse effectively. Otherwise you're going to lose all your detail. As you're going through, study the shapes that are created within each area when you're doing your light and shadow and all of your contrast. Remember, the more contrast you use, the more your eye is going to be drawn into it. Now, the reference picture is going to look really overexposed. Notice that that background is pretty well white. And that's because dark horses are absorb so much light that you need to almost overexpose the picture in order to get the detail in their face. The other part that's kind of hard with this reference picture is because it is overexposed, all of those colors look exceptionally washed out. But we're going to go back through and we're going to fix that, but not just yet. Now for the background, I originally wanted to go with some fall colors, something to complement those cool colors that create the coat color. Now the horse, sadly, when I got done with this, looked like it was on fire, and that's, that's no good. So I added a little bit of purple and some violets, some more analogous colors. Well, then it started looking like it was from the 80s. It was altogether too bright. So despite my wanting to, I added some green to gray down all those oranges and pull down the overall color tone and push the background just where it belongs, in the back. Now this gives it a lot of contrast and kind of makes it overall kind of come together. But giving it that mottled background gives it a kind of sense of life and life of all of its own and not being quite so seasonally specific.
Now here's the problem. Now that we got all of this color in that background, the horse looks like I literally cut and pasted it on, and for all intents and purposes I kind of did. So in order to bring the horse back into the painting without giving it that cut and pasted look, we have to bring some of our background color into that reflective black coat. So in order to do that we're going to bring in some of those violets, those purples, a little bit of red, and a little bit of blue. In bringing in those colors into the coat, it brings the overall piece together as a whole. 